let's get into Fitch. So, <laughs> so, first of all, first I want to apologize. And I don't remember all the guys who were exactly the guys. Vladimir Matyshenko was one of them. Grisby was one of them. And there were a few other guys that when Ariel Hawani tweeted that, they didn't know that they were cut. And that is 100% my fault. I take full responsibility for it, and I apologize. Because first of all, Vladimir Matyshenko, I've known him since we bought this company. I, I, I love that guy. I respect him very much as a fighter, and I have a great relationship with him, and I always have. And uh, it, 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 it's bothered me for the last two days that I did that to those kids. To find out on Twitter, or through somebody else, that you were cut, instead of getting the phone call first. You know? And believe me. I got the Joe Silva fucking phone call that, that that hadn't even been relayed to the fighters yet, you know, and, and uh, it, I, I really do apologize to all the guys that that happened to. Number two, this is a fucking sport just like NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, or any other sport. Now, everybody is so, I mean, the words that I was reading on Twitter, fucking, this is a travesty. This is like, like a fucking... Tidal wave hit the biggest populated place on fucking planet Earth and wiped out tons of women and children and innocent people. Give me a fucking break, okay? This is a sport just like any other sport. Woodson just got cut. The Green Bay Packers just cut Woodson, okay? And a million other guys are getting cut, traded, and everything else. John Fitch is ranked number nine. Okay. However you want to look at that, he's ranked number nine, whether you think it's right, it's wrong, or the rankings are bullshit or whatever. Ranked number nine right now, right? Now, this isn't a case where John Fitch was ranked number nine, number seven, number six, number four, number two, and then we cut him. He was ranked number one, fought for the title, he was ranked number two, he was ranked number three, six, seven, and now he's nine. That's called the downside of your career. He's on the downside. He's fought, he's lost two, two fights, one draw, and one one fight. And everybody, and then I saw stuff. I just want to, because I got shit in my head from Twitter and all the other shit that I've been reading, right? Oh, it's because he beat Eric Silva. He beat his guy in Brazil and all this shit. Who the fuck is Eric Silva beat? That was Eric Silva's first real fight. It was a great fight. They won fight of the night. He won a bonus for it. Okay? Now, John Fitch can go out now, and he can... Viacom's got plenty of money. Okay? Viacom MMA isn't hurting for fucking cash. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of other places where this guy can go and he can make some money. The other thing is, John Fitch was ranked number one in the world and yes, John Fitch gets paid a lot of money to put John Fitch on a fucking prelim or put John Fitch over here. The, great, the difference between John Fitch and Charles Woodson that just got cut, right? John Fitch can go get a couple more fights and come back to the UFC. Happens every fucking day all the time. So it's not like John Fitch was on this incredible fucking winning streak, one of the greatest fucking welterweights in the history of the world. This guy's a fucking Hall of Famer. Guy's never won a fucking title in his life. What do you, what do you consider a Hall of Famer? If fucking John Fitch is a Hall of Famer, it's gonna, that fucking thing's gonna be packed. It's gonna be one fucking huge Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? How much does his style factor into it? I think that's a lot of questions. That Here's ask. the other thing. Wait, before we get to his style. Here's the other thing. Dana hates John Fitch. He's hated him forever, and he's just been waiting to cut him since that video game deal. Are you fucking shitting me? There's nobody in the history of this business that I hated worse than Tito Ortiz. You know what I mean? Every time I'd sit down in my chair and watch the fight, I'd be like, beat his ass. That's how bad I hated this guy. He ended his career in the UFC. There are guys, jo Rampage Jackson was just spewing all kinds of craziness about us. Came in the fight, he fought. I saw him in the backstage, I shook his hand, shook his hand before the fight. And then when he walked away, he said, you're gonna miss me. I said, I miss you already, brother. You know what I mean? No hard feelings. This whole John Fitch Dana battle is so fucking overrated. I don't have one ounce of hate for John Fitch. I don't, I don't hate the guy at all. I don't even dislike him, not even a little bit. I like John Fitch. So I, give me some feedback here. So what's... So the style. How much does the style, style factor yeah. into? Because he, he I got, is... I got... Listen. Uh, what's, what's his name? I get crazy and everything jumps out of my head. <clears throat> he just fought in England. Riddle? 
Riddle. Thank you. Let's talk about Riddle. Do I hate him? Do I hate his style? Am I going to try to get him out of here now? And I'm gonna... Riddle fights just like Fitch. Same fight. Well, he has been lately. And it <coughs> went from being super exciting to now, you know, he wants to grab your legs and hold you down and lay, you know. It's part, it's, this is mixed martial arts. What made the, the Eric Silva, John Fitch fight so great is that Eric Silva could actually neutralize his wrestling a little bit and hit him with some strikes. That's what made it such a great fight. You know, it actually goes the other way. If you're a guy who can actually be laid on, Shea Mills, people are fucking, Shea Mills was cut? If you didn't know how I felt about the way Shea Mills fought that night, this is the UFC. This is the pinnacle of this sport. The best fighters in the world fight here, okay? And if you get that top position with 35 seconds left, and then you just stand there, and then you stand up, and then you walk away, and then you get double-legged again for the last 25 seconds, you didn't want that fucking fight bad enough. Fans are going crazy at me. He was tired! Well, if you're that fucking tired in three rounds, you don't belong here either. You should be in better shape than that. So what's your recommendation to The fighters? recommendation is this is a fucking combat sport, one of the toughest sports in the world. Anybody who's a professional athlete, you know you have that window. Make the fucking most of it while you're here. So is it better to fight safe and try to get the win so you don't get cut, or is it better to go, to go out there and maybe you get knocked out? If that's the way you think when you go out and fight, maybe you shouldn't be here either. What you should do is you should go out and try to be the best in the world. And you should try to whoop everybody's ass as impressively. It depends on how much money you want to make, you know? Do you want to go around and lay on guys? How many people are beating down the door, you know, to, to, to see uh, any of those guys fight again? You know, and actually, the response that John Fitch has had is awesome. I'm glad that that many people are behind him and support him. That's not a bad thing. Good for him, you know? But I can tell you this, John Fitch isn't cheap. So, good. You know, Viacom MMA has some money. So he can go out there right now, he can go out on the free market and find out exactly what he's worth. Right? I think what some people have a problem with is just the fact that, you know, like Leonard Garcia and Dan Hardy were defending themselves on Twitter yesterday. His fans were saying, you know, oh, you guys still have a job, you guys keep losing. I mean, can you just, I, I think that all of us, and you talk about the bubble, we can, we can say, well, there are some fighters who are in the UFC primarily, and they're great fighters, but for entertainment value. So you the, have to no, have that's not there. true. So the question, here's the question. Any fucking, look at any sport, anybody who owns a team or a league or anything like that, when you look at your, I have, here, here's another fact. We have 470 something guys under contract, okay? We have over a hundred guys too many. We have over a hundred guys too many on the roster right now, okay? So what's gonna happen is, when you lose, it, listen, the blood, the blood has not all been spilled yet. There's more coming. It's not every day you cut a top 10 fighter though. Yeah. And that's why- I Top 10 fighter on his way down the ladder. Well, yeah. Not on his way up the ladder. True. Maybe so, but John Fitch only lost three times in seven years. Yeah. And he tied And guess Tracy. what's going to happen to John Fitch? He will end up at Bellator or one of these other organizations, and he will win a world title. He'll be a champion there. He will smash every single guy over there, and he'll be a champion. If he gets a few fights outside, do you think he'd welcome him back? Uh, when has that never happened? A guy goes out, wins a few fights, has some impressive runs, and then comes back. I mean, this isn't the first guy we've ever cut. And the whole thing, like, this is the fucking biggest disaster in the history of the world. This shit's crazy. The guy's going this way. He's not going that way. He didn't go fucking nine, seven, six, five, four, and we cut him. He went number one to fucking number nine. And he's super fucking expensive. And he'll end up, he'll end up somewhere and he can come back. Is that it, kind of like you mentioned, Kane deserving a re-up? You gave him the re-up even though you didn't need to. This is kind of the opposite of that. Is that yeah. how you view it? This is, this is the business. This is the sports business. It's the way it happens. You know? I mean, there's no better explanation than Charles Woodson. The guy won the Heisman Trophy for defense. You know, defensive player. And, and, and you know, you, he, you, just, he just got cut. You could counter that, though, that Charles could go to another NFL team and he's still playing in the NFL, the brand of the NFL. Yeah. For John, you strip the UFC brand. It's... It's difficult in that sense. Your guys are independent contractors. That's the sport. That's life. And, 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 and this is what I always tell these guys, man. When, when, when you know, we, when we talk, we're, we are only as good as our last fight. Not you. We. All of us. Me, 
the UFC and the fighters, we all feel it. When, when, when you have a bad fight and you go on a skid, it's not good for any of us. Are you expecting this type of you know, huh? fallout from the fans or cutting John Fitch? Were you expecting to get this type of reaction or is it a little shocking? No, I never even thought about it. It's awesome. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the fans are behind John Fitch. You know what I mean? It's good. I don't hate John Fitch. I don't dislike John Fitch. But to say that this is like the biggest fucking tragedy in the history of the world and all the shit that was coming, I was like, this, this is fucking ridiculous. Dana, how involved are you in these? Obviously, when it's like a. I'm involved in everything. So anything that goes wrong or anything you don't like, blame me. Was it your but call on this one? Blame me. Like, a, like if there was a lower, less big name guy. Yeah, I wasn't calling Joe Silva up going, you fucking cut John Fitch? Of course. But did he say, I want to cut him? And you yeah. said, I agree. Or did you say, I want to cut him? How did that work? Our guys come to us and say, this is what we want to do. And then you. Say, approve or disapprove. Has it ever happened where someone like Joe or Sean would say, I want to cut this guy, and you say no? Yeah. Okay. So you could Anything that you don't like, any decision that you don't like and you think is wrong and stupid and fucked up is me. Blame me. <laughs> don't blame Joe Silva. Don't blame anybody else. Blame me. What do you blame on getting 100 fighters too heavy? Is it strike force, women, yeah. flat flyaways? No, you know what? We, we, we've been, first and foremost, we, when you get in here, yeah, people are like, oh, they're going to start kicking real fucking guys out to bring in the women and stuff. No. What's happened is, again, contrary to fucking popular belief, we're good guys. Guys lose some fights and they're like, you know what? Dan Hardy puts it out there all the time. We're going to keep Dan Hardy. I want to keep Dan Hardy. I want to keep Leonard Garcia because the guy's got fucking heart and he comes in and fights and does this and And then you get into a situation where you got a lot of guys here, you know? I tell the fucking guys from the Ultimate Fighter, every one of you are gonna fight in the car. I tell you, you know, it, you get in these situations sometimes. You go on a fucking skid in this business. You gotta go, and you gotta come back. Go win some fights and come back. No different than it has ever been since day one of this company. Same exact thing. And when we cut a guy that's ranked number nine, the guy's on the way down the ladder, not up the ladder. So how long is the rope thing for a guy like you, Ryan Faber? Yeah, I don't, could be Saturday. You never know. There's over a hundred guys. who are heavy. Can you really say if Fitch is on so, his way down? So, and though? the big question is, who? Can you really say if Fitch is on his way down if he's only lost the two top five guys? Well, he was nine. ranked number one, fought for the title, and now they got him ranked number nine. I mean, and if you really sat down yourself and honestly fought to a draw with BJ Penn, right? Got knocked out by Hendricks, and, and that division is a nasty fucking division. I mean, just this tournament we're doing up in. Uh, in Montreal, you look at this thing and you're like, wow, these guys are definitely all the best guys there right now. Where does John Fitch fit into that? He, nine is probably correct. But he still hasn't lost back-to-back -back fights. You know, you're saying he's on a skid, and I, I agree with you. Yeah, he hasn't had the best performance. Well, he didn't lose back-to-back -back fights. He had a draw, then a loss, right? Yeah. Then a win, then a, win, then, a win, then a loss. Fight of the night win. Yeah, it's good. He got more money. He got fight of the night because it takes two guys to do that, right? If Eric Silva's wrestling wasn't Right there, that wouldn't have been fight of the night. You understand what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, when you really break it down, you're just like, well, he's the only guy, he hasn't lost back to back. Who did Eric Silva beat? This was Eric Silva's first real big fight and real test. And it was a damn good fight, fight of the night. That's called a skit. He's on the downside, he's not on the upside. He's not knocking guys off and buzzsawing through guys. He's not doing a, a Hendrix. He's not doing, a, uh, you know, he's not like the other guys in that division. And, you know, he had a draw before that. Damn it. Wait, before we wrap up here, any more questions about Fitch? I don't want you guys to go, fuck, I wish I asked him that. <laughs> you, you, you sound like you're ready for the fan Q&A tomorrow. So I'm, dude, I'm, ready, ready. I'm ready for any q and I, I saw that you were doing I, the Q&A. I don't like, want any of you to walk away here going, oh, I should have fucking asked him that question. I guess the, Ask me. The thing I see people asking is, is this sport, is this entertainment, is this business? What is it? Because in a sport, if you win, you're around. You know, if you're ranked, you're around. How, how do you balance that all out? How, how do you figure, though? If you're in a sport and you're ranked, and you're, how, what exactly does that mean? It's different. It's not, it's not, this isn't football or basketball. We're talking about combat sports so you either have this or boxing to compare it to okay and if you look at boxing you have guys that are ranked there's fucking 20 different rankings and guys are all over the place you know what I mean and it doesn't mean that that, that a guy acts just because he's ranked number nine this isn't a guy that was on his way up he's like going up like a fucking missile and we're like that's it he's at number three cut this guy he's fucking making too much money he's doing this and doing that the guy is on a skid 
whether you want to admit it, you want to look at his record, or however you want to do it, a skid is a skid. A draw, two losses, and a win, and the win is over a kid who hasn't fought anybody. But was a, but was a big prospect. The, the reason why people, many guys have been on skids. Yeah. But top 10 guys not on skids. So that's what the people are like, all right, this guy's on a skid, this guy's but on I a did, skid. But I did just say that. At the end of the day, you know. It's how, you're saying it's how, how you're, how you're fighting. No. Have you been here? I have. <laughs> I said, first and foremost, don't ever think that this isn't a business because it is, number one. Right. It is a business. Number two, John Fitch makes a lot of money. He gets paid a lot of money, and he's on a skid. He's on his way down. Whether he's ranked number nine in the world or not, it doesn't mean that he's still, you know, that he's still going to stick that? around here. There's a hundred more guys going to go. Did you hear that one? Yes. So it, it has not, it's not over. Right. There's going to be other guys that are going to go. Some of the names that were thrown up there, I mean, Shea Mills, Super nice guy. I like Shane Mills. Shane Mills showed me that night he did not want it. And I, I, go, I go back to Bobby Green. I go back to Bobby Green. Bobby Green fought Volkman. Bobby Green did not fucking quit in that fight. Referee screwed him big time. Right when he finally gets that top position and he's doing damage, she stands him up. Right? The kid stayed in there and he fought to the end and he fought till he won. If you want to stay in this fucking company, that's how you better fight. That's what you better do. Be Bobby Volkman. Uh, yeah. Bobby Green. Yeah, be Bobby Green, man. Be those kids. Those fucking kids that came in that night from Strike Force were so hungry. They were hungry, man. And that's what I want. I want guys that are hungry. Do I like John Fitch? Yes. Do I dislike him in any way? No. Do I respect him as a fighter? Yes, I do. But not the biggest tragedy on earth. He will end up somewhere else, and if he keeps winning, he will come back. And if he does end up somewhere else, he will become a champion. Nobody will beat him in any other organization.